There have been 18 school shootings in 2018 alone. This has been repeated by Democrats on television and shared millions of times on social media. The statistic came from Bloomberg's anti-gun group, but the statistic is bogus. The Washington Post calls the number flat out wrong. They were calculating things like accidental firearm discharges in school parking lots late at night while no students were present and no one was injured. Second lie, the shooter, Nicholas Cruz, was a member of a white nationalist group in Florida and participated in paramilitary drills. This was based on some racist nuts comment looking for attention, but the media ran with it without fact-checking. Police say there is no connection with the shooter and this white nationalist group. Line number three. How many times have you guys heard the these types of mass shootings only happen in America line? Let's look at the statistics. The deaths from mass shootings where over 15 people are killed are higher in Europe, in Africa, and India and Pakistan. Line number four. The shooting is President Trump's fault. Here's Jimmy Kimmel. You still haven't done anything about not You've literally done nothing. Actually, you've done worse than nothing. You like to say this is a mental health issue, but one of your very first acts as president, Mr. Trump, was to actually roll back the regulations that were designed to keep firearms out of the hands of the mentally ill. You did that. Your party voted to repeal the mandates on coverage for mental health. So I agree this is a mental illness issue because if you don't think we need to do something about it, you're obviously mentally ill. Now that's propaganda. Three major news networks like ABC, CBS, and NBC pushing the same thing. President Trump and the Republican Party made it easier for mentally ill people to buy guns. Why would they even do that? It doesn't even make sense because it's false. So let's say a 65-year-old collects Social Security disability benefits and has someone else manage those benefits. The Obama administration wanted to prohibit that person from buying a gun because they didn't control their own finances, so they couldn't protect themselves. Even the ACLU and the Americans Association of People with Disabilities said that this was unconstitutional. And now to the warning signs. A few months ago, Nicholas Cruz wrote a comment under a YouTube video that read, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. The man who posted the YouTube video contacted the FBI, but the FBI did not contact Nicholas Cruz. And we're going to have that tipster here in just a moment. In addition, on January 5th of this year, another tipster close to Cruz called the FBI tip line and reported that Cruz owned a gun, wanted to kill people, was exhibiting erratic behavior, was posting disturbing things on the internet, and warned that he may shoot up a school. And the FBI just released this statement. Under established protocols, the information provided by the should have been assessed as a potential threat to life. The information then should have been forwarded to the FBI Miami field office where appropriate investigative steps would have been taken. We have determined that these protocols were not followed. This is sickening incompetence from the FBI. The FBI has a very poor track record when it comes to missed signs. In the Orlando nightclub shooting, the FBI investigated the terrorists for 10 months before the attack, but said he never broke the law, so they never did anything. In the Boston Marathon bombing, the FBI received a tip from the Russians that the Sarnov brothers were radicalized and training for attacks. The FBI never visited their mosque, never interviewed their wife or friends, and never shared information with local law enforcement. They closed the case, and two years later, bombs went off in Boston. In the South Carolina church shooting, Dylan Roof should never have been able to purchase a weapon. But the FBI examiner conducting the background check failed to get the police report that showed he had a conviction for drug possession. And the Fort Hood shooting. Army Major Nadal Hassan had been emailing with known terrorists overseas and had been radicalized, but because of political correctness, the FBI dropped the ball. Now, hindsight's 2020, but now there is a very clear pattern of the FBI missing warning signs, and that is unacceptable. Joining me now, the blogger who notified the FBI about Cruz, Ben Benight. 
Okay, so Ben, you see this comment under your YouTube video that says, I want to be a professional school shooter, and you contacted the FBI. What happened next? After I contacted the FBI, um, I contacted the local office because I couldn't find an email address. They sent two agents out right away. Uh, the two agents came to my office and gathered the information that I had to offer, took a copy of the screenshot, and um, I thought initiated an investigation. And you never had any more contact with those FBI agents? That was the last you ever heard from law enforcement on the issue? Until the day of the shooting, that's correct.